first verse of Surah An-Nisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he says in the beginning of Surah An-Nisa, Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsi wahida. This is an ayah that we hear every single Jum'ah khutbah. It's part of the khutbah al-hajja. But before we get to Surah An-Nisa, the very first ayah of Surah An-Nisa, I want to talk about the last ayah of Surah Ali Imran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. He's addressing the believers. And I mentioned this probably last week, that Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, that when Allah says in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, because this phrase, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, is mentioned approximately 88 times in the Qur'an. Is mentioned 88 times in the Qur'an. And he says, radiallahu anhu ibn Mas'ud, that whenever Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, you have to pay attention to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about to tell us and what he's about to address uh, to all of us Muslims. So he says, Ya ladheena amanu, isbiru, be patient. Why be patient? Because Surah Ali Imran talks about how to be patient in the face of adv- in the face of adversity. When you're facing challenges, how are you supposed to remain patient? Then he says, Isbiru wa sabiru. And not only are you supposed to be patient, but encourage each other to be patient. Be there for one another. As a community, you're not just going through your adversity, but you're encouraging others to go through that adversity and you are supporting one another. وَرَابِطُوا and remain firm. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah. This is the key thing here. He says, Allah. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So you can be successful. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Muslims here and he's saying, Allah. Now in the beginning of Surah Nisa, Allah takes that same advice of Allah, and he is now addressing the entire humanity. That it is their responsibility also to, aff- to maintain taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why Allah says, Ya ayyuha nas, ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. Now first of all, this ayah or this phrase, Ya ayyuha nas, compared to Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, is only mentioned a few times in the Quran. So you have, for example, Ya ayyuha nas, ittaq, um, ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. Then you have, I believe, um, a few more other places. Um, Ya ayyuhan nas, Urbudu rabbakum waladhi khalaqakum waladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. Mention Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, and there are a few other places in the Quran not come to my mind right now. Uh, ya ayyuhan nas, antum al-fuqara'u ila Allah. All of you, O mankind, you are a, you are, uh, fuqara'u ila Allah, meaning that you are dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no person, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, that they can say, that we're not dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of us, we're dependent on Allah. Then he says, اِتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُم مِّن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا Be God conscious. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of us from Adam alayhi islam and Hawa alayhi islam. Now, why is this ayah important? Because at the end of this ayah, Allah then talks about the concept of family. He says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ be God conscious, be aware, be aware, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alladhi tasa'aluna bihi. There are two things that Allah is telling us to be aware of. Number one is, alladhi tasa'aluna bihi. Through which you continuously ask, meaning that when we say, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or for, for God's sake, for Allah's sake, when we say this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Beware of this concept, beware of this statement of yours, and then also be aware of wal arham. So ittaqullah al arham. That be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to your arham. What does arham mean? It comes from the word rahim. It comes from the word of the womb of the mother. The word arham mean, meaning the womb of the mother. We all are connected. We all come from the womb of our mothers. And this relationship that is established and created between brothers and sisters, it happens through where? The womb of the mother. Telling us, when it comes to the rights of your siblings, when it comes to the rights of your parents, when it comes to the rights of your relatives, the fact that you all are connected, 
you have to be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Meaning that when it comes to our relationship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable on the day of judgment. And not only that, what's beautiful about this ayah is that at the beginning of this ayah, Allah mentions taqwa. At the end of this ayah, Allah mentions taqwa. Why did Allah mention taqwa? Because Allah is teaching us another lesson here. And that is, inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. If we want honor, we want dignity, the best way to go is through taqwa. That's why Allah says in the in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. I have created you into many different cultures, many different ethnicities, many different backgrounds and so forth. But you know when it comes to cultures and ethnicities and so forth, each one is trying to show their own superiority compared to the others. Everyone wants to show that I belong to the best family. I belong to the best culture. I belong to the best ethnicity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, the only one who has the most amount of dignity in the eyes of Allah is based on their taqwa. It has nothing to do with our culture. It has nothing to do with our, our language. It has nothing to do with the color of our skin. The only person who is dignified in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has taqwa. Likewise, in a very similar manner, when it comes to the family, if you, you know, and even in a family, there's a lot of competition. Who is more superior in the family? Who has the most control in the family? Who is the most dignified in the family? If we're looking for honor and respect in a family, then we have to apply taqwa in our life. And that is why a person who has taqwa in the family, they're going to do things according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. They're going to do things according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that means that a person who's in a family, they're going to take care of their responsibilities. If a husband has taqwa, meaning that a husband fulfills their role and their responsibility, as highlighted in the Qur'an, and as highlighted in the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, they will be dignified in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a wife takes care of her role and her responsibility, as highlighted in this surah, by the way, in this surah, Allah talks about the role of the husband. Allah talks about the role of the wife in this surah. Allah, is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that if the wife also fulfills her role and responsibility, and she has taqwa about this, and she's aware that Allah is going to ask me on the day of judgment about this, then she'll be dignified in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She may not get her respect in the family. He, the husband, may not get his respect in the family that he truly deserves. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has immense amount of respect for this person. And that is why in our families, it is important that when a person says, I'm going to bring the family together, when there are conflicts, and by the way, it doesn't matter how religious we are. If you're coming to the masjid or you're not coming to the masjid, every single family has drama. Every single family has issues going on. There is no one who can tell me that I have nothing going on in my family. We all have issues. But you know what the thing is? You know what the most important thing is? There are some people who are going to try to bring the family together. And there are some people who will make it a point. It will bring, it's all about their ego. They will even break the family apart for the sake of their own ego. That's why Allah says, Ittaqu rabbakum. We have to be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. That is why at the end of the verse, what did Allah say? Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. The word raqib here means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever watchful. You know when you're being watched 24-7, you don't do anything that is wrong. Imagine someone is there next to you, you're always on your best behavior. Someone is watching you 24-7, you're always on your best behavior. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing us 24-7. We have to always be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands. Not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watch what we are doing, Allah knows what's in our heart also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watchful about that too. So that is why when it comes to the subject of family, when it comes to the matters of our family, the most important thing is apply taqwa in all the aspects of our family. When it comes to my rights towards my children, we have to apply taqwa. Once again, we have rights towards our children too. It doesn't mean that only to our wife or to our spouse. We have, we have to fulfill the rights of our children. That is where we have to apply taqwa. And finally, I'll finish on this. When it comes to the subject of our families, 
That is why there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that where kith and kin or this relationship said to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that man wasalati wasala, uh, Allah. Whoever establishes kith and kin, then may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala be connected with them. And whoever severs relationships in a family, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or Basically, Kith and Kin sent this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you be separated from them. And we, you really have to really ask ourselves this one question. If I'm here in my family and I sever relationships, what do you think, what kind of face are we going to show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? Honestly. That because of my own ego, I broke up families. Because of my own ego, I caused chaos within families. What face are we going to show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if I'm a person who's bringing the hearts together, because it's not about who's more famous. It's not, it's not about who's bringing, who's, who gets the credit in the family. Because if you don't have a family, wallahi, you have nothing nowadays. Family is everything to all of us. So that is why we always, we have to apply taqwa when it comes to the matters of our family. In every single aspect of our family, we apply taqwa because why? Allah will not ask us on the day of judgment that who, who did you wrong? Allah will ask us on the day of judgment, did we fulfill the rights of everyone else? If I sit down with you right now and I ask you, what grievances do you have towards your family? You will say, my wife did this, my son did this, my daughter did this, my relative did this, 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 and this. They all did this to me. That is not what Allah will ask us on the Day of Judgment. Allah is not going to put us on the stand and say, okay, who did you wrong? Allah already knows who did us wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us, did you fulfill the rights of everyone around you? So that's the question that we need to ask ourselves. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never a man. Even though he was Rasulullah, he was, the, he was so well respected and dignified. And think about this, even in this day and age, many of us, we get respect at work. When we come back home, we may not get that same respect. But then we come home and we cause a chaotic situation. Rasulullah never went home and demanded his rights. But he made it a point to fulfill everyone else's rights. And that's the unfortunate situation. That, that is unfortunately the situation we're not living in anymore. Everyone is asking for their rights. Everyone has complaints about others. But have we ever taken a step back and asked ourselves, Am I fulfilling the rights of everyone else? Am I treating everyone the way they need to be treated according to the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah? And the answer is for the most part, no, we're not. So that is why let's remember that we, when it comes to our relatives, when it comes to our family, each one of us here, we're going to be questioned about this. That is why, in Allah kana alaykum naqiba. Allah is always watching us. So inshallah. Uh, let's keep this in mind when it comes to the rights of everyone. Let's try to make it a point to learn about their rights, fulfill their rights, inshallah, and let's apply taqwa in all aspects of our family and family members, inshallah. And then we'll be going through the other ayats, inshallah. We intend to also go through the ayah that is, you know, in Surah Nisa, Rijal Qawwamun Ala Nisa. Inshallah, we'll go through that ayah also and the tafsir of that ayah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us taqwa, inshallah, in our life, especially in the matters of our family. Amin, Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.